this is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're in a ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to No Hold Bar Network. All right, guys. Welcome back to part number two of the Wrestle Forum podcast. Uh, joining the forum, all the Kyle guys, as you've seen in the end of the part one. There, um, we had some technical difficulties with Skype, but I think we got everything sorted out. We're going to record this offline just to be completely safe and to not have to stop it again live on air for you guys. So, what we're doing is uh, recording offline for this second part. Uh, joining the forum again is all the Kyle here to talk about some wrestling. And uh, what, what were we talking about last? <laughs> what was the last thing we were talking we about? We talked a little bit about like, the G1 a little bit. Like, so, should we like, attempt the G1 again? <laughs> yeah, we, we should just attempt the G1 now. Let's, let's go back because I really wanted to hear what he had to say. So please, continue. <laughs> oh, I just say the G1 is like, my favorite tournament. It's, it's one I look forward to every year. And uh, it's... It's just insane because, like, the, the of the time difference with Japan mm. and here, mm. so it's like, uh, like the, 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 there'll be days where, like, you know, I'll get up at like four thirty in the morning to to watch the, the, the G one live, and then like, it, and, like, it's always hilarious because, like, uh, me and my friends will be in our group chat talking about it, and then we'll we'll, we'll get excited because the G one's at one o'clock is going to be at one o'clock the, the next morning instead of four thirty. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, those are, I, I love tournaments, and the G1 is obviously like one of the greatest tournaments out there, the greatest wrestling tournaments. And then, uh, like I brought up before, I think AW probably should eventually adapt some sort of tournament where we get independent stars that are looking to break out in this industry in a tournament style, and the winner of that tournament receives an AW contract. I think that could probably go over very well. And again, it brings more eyes to the independent scene, like we brought up before. The base, which is the base of of wrestling right now, that's where everyone starts out. Where everyone, like a lot of people, sometimes kind of forget. I think a lot of the WWE fans, a lot of their top stars right now started out in the independent circuit. They had to have started somewhere. There's the select few that are homegrown that you know started right into the WWE, and that was their first wrestling spot. But there's not a lot of that. It's it's independent wrestling is the base of of wrestling like we mentioned before and tournaments i think are a really bright spot in the in the wrestling community as well um but i seen on your profile there kyle you uh you run a aw discord i see that i see there uh, yeah i one of the admins uh with my friend summer mm-hmm. uh, uh she she started it uh me and her used to run the uh, jurassic express patreon but uh, so by then one day we we'll, we decided uh, to try and branch out mm-hmm. and just make it into an all AEW thing, and uh, he did it. And then like a few of uh, the AEW people shared it, and so now it's like grown. I think we have like five thousand members right now. Oh wow! That's and like that's for sweet. a while there, for a while there while we were. Uh, when everything was live and stuff, we were getting a different AEW uh, talent member t- to do uh, a Q&A. Well, what we do is every week uh, we had a Discord channel uh, in there for people to submit questions. Mm-hmm. And, and then on Instagram Live uh, after Dynamite, uh, the, uh, the AEW would go live on their Instagram Live and then uh, they would answer the questions from the Discord. That's cool. Yeah. We yeah, saw, it, I saw like a bunch of those. Those are pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it, one of the, the funniest ones. That, uh, like, like, like sometimes, like some of the talent would just jump in Discord randomly uh, at times unannounced, and it would just like be all. It would just be really cool. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a Peter Avalon jumped in w- w- one day, and like I, <laughs> I asked him, 
I asked him if I could be a, if I could be an honorary librarian, and he said <laughs> yes. So, 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 so at one point, I changed my name to is it a Ali Kyle? I was a librarian Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you told me like Trent popped in one day and I was like, oh, <gasps> yes. The fun- <laughs> I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was the most yeah. Trent thing ever. He literally like jumped in, jumped in a chat and said, uh, and said, Hey, I'm, I'm Trent. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then he left. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. That's like, fantastic. Uh, Orange Cassidy is part of it, but uh, um, he hadn't like joined in or anything. Uh, I was hoping maybe he would join in and just uh, give like a thumbs up and and then leave. <laughs> he doesn't really talk much. That's not really like his style, though. He doesn't really talk much. Who's been your oh, favorite? Yeah. That's like answered a bunch of questions from the Discord. What now? What's been like your favorite of like you know since they go live on Instagram to answer a lot of the questions from Discord? Who's been like your favorite? Like that. Oh. <laughs> favorite uh marco's thud's pretty funny though i've seen marco's, <laughs> marco's was pretty good good mm-hmm. uh i really liked i like a butcher and the blade oh yeah big fan of the blade here i met him yeah. i met him way back in the day when he was pepper parks yeah him and ali ali was cherry bomb at that point yeah and it was a house of hardcore event here in Niagara Falls. It was so cool, and he's so humble. Oh my God, guy's the best, man. Like he's he was the nicest dude possible. Ali was really cool too. Um, but again, I from what I I've told the story before. The the one thing that I remember the most from that day are two things. One, me and my buddy Brandon were the only ones to be were cheering for Pepper Parks, and he when he was when he came to the ring and we were giving him a standing ovation, he pointed at us, which was really cool, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and the other part was the sh- t-shirt he had he had a t-shirt at that point and it said sex weights and protein shakes yep, yep. i love it <laughs> i love it yeah oh. yeah he, uh there's and and uh there's and sunny kisses has been one of my favorites as well okay. oh man sunny kisses is sweet yeah we met sunny kiss at full gear she's really or he's really nice yeah, yeah. I went nuts. I was like, ah! I was like, let me go over there. And then I was talking to him and like, cause I had like just missed him at like Capital Wrestling recently. And I was like, so I was talking about that. I was like, I just missed you at Capital. And oh, man, like crazy. Yeah, Tiff, you mentioned too, like uh, she's mentioned it before too. She mentioned uh, uh, meeting Peter Avalon at Full Gear 2. And he was really nice cause they, they started going into the indie talks there. <laughs> I that that's what it is. I think they like appreciate it because then they really know like you're a fan, right? Like that it's not like, oh, I just started watching AEW. Like they know like you supported them from so he got really excited with me when I started bringing up Wrestle Circus in Texas. And he's like, oh my God. He's like, wasn't that fun? Like, like all into it. And we got into this whole conversation. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, but these are the things like they appreciate is like, because I'm sure like every fan does this, right? And I'm sure you've done a bunch of meet and greets yourself, right? And it's like you're always like, oh, like if you go meet like Seth Rollins and you'll talk about stuff about currently or something like that. But like when you start pulling old school stuff with them, like it piques their interest and it's like, oh, you know, like I've, I've had that with friends. Yeah. That they brought like DVDs like I like I'm using Seth Rollins as an example that it's like it wasn't stuff like they brought not of Seth Rollins to get Tyler signed. Black. It was, it was, like, yeah, like it was Tyler <laughs> Black. And I was like. So, like, that's the stuff, like, that it's like, oh, wow, like, you've legit been a fan for a very long time. So, that's why I'm always saying it's so important with the independent scene, because you don't know where they're going to go, you know? So, oh, they make stars. Uh, uh, it, it, that's uh, kind of like how uh, Chris Jericho is. I met him before, and it, it, was, at a, it was after a father, uh, my, my friend Carmen, who got me into SHW, He's uh, he he's worked with Fozzy a lot on music videos and stuff, mm-hmm. and so he got he he got me and my friend to go backstage, and we got to we got to meet Chris Jericho, and since it was in Atlanta, DDP was there as well, so we got to meet oh. him as well. And like, if you ever meet Chris Jericho, like he's if you meet him when he's wrestling. It's okay to talk about wrestling with him, but if if you if you go see Fozzy and yep. you meet him. 
He wants you to talk about Fozzie. He yeah. doesn't yeah. want to talk about wrestling. Yeah. 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 I, I, I met him. I met him twice. Well, I seen him twice and Fozzie. Oh, yeah. so good. So good. Yeah. Oh, like my it, it, it was really cool. Like I was, I was talking to him. I was telling him about how much I really liked his. Uh, I really liked Fozzie and stuff. And I could tell that he really appreciated it. That, that I wasn't trying to talk to him about wrestling when I was at yeah. a Fozzie show. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, so much fun! I love. I oh, love so seeing him play. Like, it's such good oh, shit. Man, like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it is. No, it's fun. It's great. It's just. Oh. You feel it. I want to see like Fozzie, told- man. Like I, I, I I've gotten heavy into his music. Fozzie is great. The, the, only, the only thing I wish they would do differently, they open every show with Judas. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but it's good though. Like it's yeah. like it gets very pumped. And I seen him in two different places in New York. I seen him in Long Island one day, and it was like this small little arena, like not even small, it's like a small little joint that, you know, is meant for concerts, but like small. You know, and like it was so funny because they had opening acts that weren't from Fozzie. It was like their opening acts for the 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 place, and the the audio was horrible <laughs> and for a music place, right? Horrible. And then they come in Fozzie, and then they're bringing their own audio, man. They're bringing their own speakers into a music <laughs> place, and it was like loud and clear and crisp. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Uh, another uh, f- uh, another thing uh, at the uh, the AEW Nashville show. Uh, after that show, uh, I got to go back to the Talent Hotel and hang out with Luchasaurus and and a future uh, uh, a bunch of other people. And it was weird. We were hanging out in the lobby of the hotel, and uh, there was like a bunch of people like in the lobby, a bunch of the talent. And it, it, it's just so weird seeing Orange Cassidy like at a gimmick. <laughs> it was really weird. I was like, "Whoa!" That was like that was like me and Tiff. We were uh, when we were at Full Gear, and we were staying actually at the uh, the hotel that the wrestlers were staring at the Crown the Crown Plaza, which was the official hotel yeah. of um, of Starcast. And we were down in the restaurant, and literally the table right next to us. It was a table of all the wrestlers. There was Jimmy Havoc, uh, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford. Um. Yeah, Xavier. Um. Well, damn, I don't even. Excalibur remember. came in at one point, maskless. Yeah. So he didn't have his mask on, but I, I, I see this yeah. guy. I'm like, who's this guy that Kim comes over and just talks to them like freelance? And I'm overhearing, and I'm like, oh my god, that's Excalibur. Like, it sounds just like him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was really cool. And no, you know what the best part? What is that whole thing? No one went up to him and like bothered them. Uh, that no, was, that's, that was, yeah. that was that the coolest thing. You gotta be cool about it. I would have been excited. Yeah, I would have been excited if I would have been y'all and saw Jimmy Havoc. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cool. But even he, like, I remember, like, who was it? We were when we went to Starcast. We saw Trent, yeah. Chucky, and Orange Cassidy, and even like Kim Sapien. He was very nice and chatty with us as well. Yeah, we were um, outside. We left. We are. We yeah. are already outside. And him and Penelope came out. The front doors, like where we were all standing outside. I think we were with somebody that we knew. Oh, we're with our friend Moose. And yeah. yeah. He was asking us, like, do you guys know if there's a mall around here? Yeah, just comes up. Do you guys know there's a mall around here? We're like, like, he was just, like, so cool. But a lot, that's what I'm saying. A lot of them are cool. Like, you can't be like weirdos. Like, you're just mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, like, you know, but be respectful. And that's what I always tell people. You have to be respectful. I mean, like, even me interviewing independent wrestlers, they tell, I always ask the question, what's the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? You know, because I'm really curious about the stories but yeah. it's so important that you have to be very respectful you know like i'm even like when i meet them in person like i'm very respectful like i met scorpio sky at uh all out when he was at the bar talking to somebody and i just was waiting patiently he saw me and like i was just like you know playing cool be- being very like patient he came <laughs> over to me i was like i didn't want to bother you he's like no he's like you're not a bother he's like come on let's take a picture you know like he was so cool like you know but like i said i was like i try to be respectful you know like i don't want to be that fan running you know yeah. being disrespectful like you know, how about you know? his face when you you brought the chocolate the giant hershey <laughs> kiss at full gear when we met him at sarcast his face <laughs> lit up he's like oh <laughs> 
Kyle was dying. He's like, tip his face. He's like, he saw the chocolate kiss. And I'm like, that felt bad. I should have brought him some like mini bag of chocolate kisses or whatever. That's great. But I had tweeted at him and I was like, I'm going to, I said, I need this sign. I need this sign. And like, you know, I told him, I was like, this is my favorite part of being the elite with him and Matt Jackson with giant kiss. And it was like my favorite, my favorite piece of being the elite. So that's why it was so important to me because I marked out so hard, right? That like my best friend Brad had to buy me this big gigantic chocolate <laughs> kiss. And I was like, he's like, you should have it signed. And I was like, yes, this is getting signed. I was like, I'm going to do it. So I carried that damn big thing all over the place in Maryland. And I had to have it signed. What's your favorite piece of being the elite? What was like your favorite? You have to have like a favorite with all the episodes. There's got to be something. Uh... Let's see. Tough question. I know. Yeah, there's it, so it many is. great there's things. So many great things. Uh, I loved uh, uh, Cody's possession, the exorcism, whenever he was just <laughs> fouling <laughs> off WWE facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was great. Ah, uh, oh, man. Ah. Uh, I love all the Matt autographs. That's like my yeah. whole thing. Yeah. That's why I had to have him do the Matt autographs. Because it was always something. So his face, when I was like, I was like, bucket list, man. I was like, this is a bucket. And Nick was like, oh, wow. I was like, yeah, bucket list for me. Do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Matt with the coffee oh. things have been funny. Like the whole Starbucks yeah. things. Those have been hilarious. They have been. I, I've been I've been really liking those. <laughs> They've been absolutely hilarious. They're great. Oh, uh, of course, all the, all the FTR stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now with the cloud thing, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah, as soon as they said, they, what, what's that in the sky? I was like, oh, please, he's FTR. And then they just threw it out there. I was like, oh, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Been waiting for years the revolt. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not too. Uh, I would know how I feel about, about that name because, yeah. you know, uh, I'm sure Tiffany knows about the. Uh, you know how there's already an independent team with that name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, a lot of people have been talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it it's... seems kind of kind of crappy to me, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll wait for the the revival one to expire when WWE just lets that one expire, then they'll copyright the name, the revival, and they'll have it. <laughs> I don't know what the current if they term decide is on to that. do that. <laughs> yeah. They... Yeah do it but even in the 200th episode like um you know the extra one that they did with like the 40 minutes of footage and like mm -hmm. to see all that like it was so funny to see little bits of the fdr in it or, like even like the coffee cup with cody and it says you know the fuck yeah. the and stuff. <laughs> well, it's just funny because you like forget a lot of these things so it's kind of like nice that's why i always say like you know if you have nothing to do this is the time to binge watch i know it's a lot 200 episodes now but, but like it's so important to go back to understand a lot of things, even if you were not a fan of like Ring of Honor or New Japan back then. Like it tells no. so much of a story of the Young Bucks and you see even Adam Cole and it's just, it's, you know, even a lot of other people too. You see Sami Zayn in it, Kevin Owens. You see a lot of people in it, which is so cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, was it? Uh, what was I gonna say? <laughs> when it comes to like independent wrestlers, uh, uh, who all would you like to see possibly in in AEW? Well, you know my answer. Like, oh, yeah. like you should just like skip over my me. Answer. <laughs> my answer. My answer is going to be number one husband Anthony Gangone. Okay, yeah, I, I like, it's just it. it just it just from what I've just seen. Won. It's tough because I don't watch a lot of independent stars. Um, but from what I've seen, um, there's two people that come to mind. One's not exactly an independent star. One wrestles for New Japan. Uh, the other one is we interviewed him actually on the podcast, Alex Zane. I'd love to see him in AEW. I think he, oh, yes. I think he could Alex be great. awesome. And another guy is kind of similar style, uh, Will Ospreay from New Japan. I'd love to see him one day in AEW. I think that guy screams dream match with almost like half the roster in AEW. And if they can produce a good enough match on TV, it could be another seven star classic. Like Will Ospreay is one is a great wrestler, and he's had constant classics there's a lot of wrestlers in the past and he's got a, a, a style of wrestling that i love so i'd love to see him in aw eventually it's funny because oh, yeah. alex zane i feel like more i would love to see him in new japan than yeah. aew 
see like I can still sit there and I can kind of push around um, because I would love to see Alex Zane and Will Ospreay go at it. You know, um, I, I would love the boats to like to be open that they could all work together. You know, like, I mean, I'm hopeful one day that we still get Marty Skrull to come over, you know, even if he stays in Ring of Honor like that, maybe we can have that crossover one day, you know, oh, a uh, crossover dream. Mm-hmm. One would be the elite oh. versus the bullet club. Now, like the bullet club that they have now versus the elite, like the former members. Yeah. Oh man, that would be an insane crossover New Japan AEW epic four man five man tag team match. Like it would be insane. Which uh, uh, here recently, uh, Marty did an interview, and he said not to uh, count out the, the, the possibility of ROH and AEW working together at some at some point. I think eventually, like a super we'll card type of pay per view. Yeah, kind of like yeah. I think they. I think it's because Cody and. The Bucks and Kenny have been part of so many of the the cross promotion pay per views for Ring of Honor that they did with New Japan that and how successful they were and how much people love those events that it, it's it's a possibility of doing something like that with Ring of Honor. I mean, you're promoting both sides, you're getting people that maybe that don't watch Ring of Honor that are fans of been going, okay, what's this Ring of Honor? Oh, that's where the Young Bucks, Kenny and Cody kind of you know came from before AEW. Let me go tune into what they're about, and you're showcasing those people. In a like a, a G one type of style, um, like G one supercar type of pay per view where you have ROH versus AEW, you do stuff like that. So, I think it could work. Yeah. I think eventually it will work. I know Marty wants to because obviously his boys are in AEW and now he's the the booker for ROH. He wants some sort of relationship between the two. So I'm imagining that's in the works. It's probably not he- first on the list, but it's in the works. Even even the crossover, you know, like even even with all the talent that we have all over the place. Like again, I know me and Kyle had talked about this. Can you imagine like having a random pay per view with like AEW worker? Let's say you know one pay per view you get like you go against New Japan, then months down the line, and maybe you like you have AEW versus Impact Wrestling. You know, like that would be such a cool concept. You know, to see like the crossover of wrestlers. You know, and and new people that you're not familiar with. I mean, it's impossible to keep up with all the wrestling that's out there today i feel they should do it like a middle of the summer kind of thing it should be like once a year they cross promote with one company and it's like a super card type of event in the middle of the summertime between double or nothing and all out and you have it right there in the middle of the summer it'd be cool it'd be really really cool uh for uh for me uh, besides Alex, uh, besides Alex Zane, which I really like, uh, I think he'd be great. Uh, there's oh, <laughs> one person, one person only. He's like one of my favorite independent wrestlers. I just recently like really got into him this year, like just this, uh, just this year, and that's Dan Housen. Oh, I love him. <laughs> oh, God, here you go. <laughs> oh my God, I love him. Everybody knows, like he's. Oh, it's just so funny because like one day I went over to my best friend Brad's house and like I go to his. He's very big on like West Coast wrestling, right? So yeah. even if it's a promotion that he knows, like I never seen. So I love going to Brad's house because he schools me in so much stuff that I don't even know. And I remember, like I came over. I don't remember which pay per view it was that I went over to see his house. And then I was like, who is that? I'm like, this is the best freaking character. <laughs> I was like that. I've ever freaking seen and i'm telling you i guarantee you he's gonna be picked up by ring of honor eventually like i really really believe that like he oh my god like he has such a great character he's so up yours up yours up yours (laughs) i subscribe uh i subscribe to his patreon and like just his 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 uh, he does a food review show in character yeah and uh the the food review show is is worth it I need to, I need to, I've been saying I've been wanting to do this and I have to do it because he, the little clip Kyle, like you have to like follow him if you don't follow him on Twitter because his, his little clips from this make me die. Just alone from that, I should be, I don't know why I'm not a Patreon of him because he is so funny. No swearing, no swearing, no swearing. <laughs> I actually have a shirt of his. I had to buy one because I love him so much like oh my god he's definitely like one of my favorites that he's he's gonna get school i'm telling you i really believe ring of honor is gonna scoop him that that's where he's gonna end up he's like perfect for like ring of honor i feel like i was just gonna say i yeah. love the clips he had oh. with orange cassidy in the mall and it was like, oh, the one place yeah. the one place was closed and he was like kicking the door and he's like stop it what are you doing <laughs> i love all these characters i really appreciate it 
Dan Housen is absolutely amazing. Uh, another one that I like, uh, he, he had some stuff with Orange Cassidy. Uh, he, he, he dropped by the AEW Discord uh, one day and just talked to everybody. And uh, uh, I talked to him, and he, he just, he's just a really nice guy. And his, uh, his, he said his goal for 2020 is to uh, to have a match in AEW at some point, and that's Gentleman Jarvis. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen him a lot. He's very interesting. I like him, too. Like, the comedy wrestling, I know, is not for everybody, but some of them is yeah. really, really good. Like, oh, man. I mean, I I'm see always- Tessa in there, too. I throw, I throw Tessa into that conversation eventually in the women's division. What would AEW? Yeah. Just because, um, like, the, the, her dad's there, and I know that I, I have to think that uh, that the uh, her and Sheeta, uh, what's his, I keep forgetting oh, his yeah. name. Um, her dad's name. Oh my god, why am I blanking on his first name? Tully Blanchard. Mm-hmm. I imagine Tully. he's doing, he's saying something backstage, you know, like, kind of give my daughter a chance. She's gonna, she, but it might be that it might be like the fact that she decided that the like, impact was for her. Mm hmm. You know, eventually though, maybe later down the line. That's what I'm saying. Like I would be cool with like crossovers. I've loved, I've loved it. I've seen Impact and and House of Glory yeah. together, and that was great. And and so like I would love to see more crossover promotions right. so we can have more dream matches. Again, you don't <laughs> have to like partner completely, but can you like like even like you were saying that like maybe like a once a year pay per view that a company like right. AW you know like just just for one pay-per-view for the year that they just do something you know aw versus impact aw versus ring of honor or whatever like that it'd just be like a fun way and a great way to cross over promotions as well and 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 learn new talent right because again you can't keep up with everything but you might find someone that you never watched before (laughs) that you might really enjoy so i got a question kyle for you Uh, i brought it up on the all the podcast before um, when do you think AEW should start to? Do you think it's too early that AW for AEW to explore maybe a little bit of a bigger arena for a pay per view? Not necessarily outside football WrestleMania type stadium, but there are college stadiums out there that are a little bit like in between. You know what I mean? Or they do have access to the Jaguars football stadium. Do you think it's too early, or do you think maybe they could run one? They could run maybe like an all out or a double or nothing in the next year or two, and they could probably sell it out. Uh, I think with the I think I think with the right card that I believe we that they could sell it out within the next year or two. It just really depends on the card. Yeah, I think they would need to. This has got to be like you, you've you built up your roster to a point where they're becoming very popular, which they are right now. Like Darby Allen's become more over than like more over than anything. And now that they have Matt Hardy in the full, full broken brilliance with full creative, like they're just and then now Lance Archer, like they're starting to get that roster. That's extremely popular, even with their their the other people like Luch, like how popular the jungle express have become and how popular uh brick baker is becoming is a heel hikaru shida like all these people in AEW that are are getting more popular by the day they're doing they're going in the right direction so i think eventually in a year or two i think it is a possibility that they could sell out with like you said the right card they could probably come close to if not selling out like you know, I'm I'm gonna assume they're gonna go with the Jaguar Stadium because of the cons, right? They have full access to yeah. that. It'll be the easiest way to save money and to do do something like that in a stadium environment. Um, and obviously being Jacksonville, being like the home of AEW, right? It's it just makes sense that they would have it there in a hot climate and stuff like that. So I think with again, like you said, the right card, you, you got to have like three marquee matches to to have a card like that three like the, the top three matches on the card like two co-main events and a main event have to be over the top people are like yes i'm traveling from i don't know ireland to jacksonville because i want to see this happen so i think yeah. it's i think it's it's eventually gonna happen i wouldn't put it past them that they've talked about it um 
it's got to be the right state yeah. to yeah. I feel like because we've already like they've people they know people will fly from all over mm -hmm. to come right so you, we've had this with the pay-per-views like chicago right a lot of people are coming from all over the place our girl maria shout out to you maria she's all the way in denmark and she flew out to chicago so again like you have to also if you're going to do bigger venues it should be in certain states like new york it's going to sell out you know if you went into madison square garden it's going to sell out right then I'm sure there's even places in like illinois because chicago is another big high base um wrestling state so i think you could do it in bigger states like maybe not you know like such smaller states but you have your fame fan base but again like i said also you're gonna have fans that are gonna fly out from all over to yeah. see well that'll be the goal is to be like a wrestlemania where there's an event once a year if they're gonna make revolution their WrestleMania, it's going to be the event once a year that people are going to take time to fly over for. And I mean, Jacksonville is a perfect place because you got the weather. You have it's Florida for Christ's sakes. Like here, you're, you're you're that screams vacation weekend and going to watch a AW Stadium type event and seeing these crazy matches. So, and if they did a thing like Starcast or like how uh, Dirty does it with their access, they could easily do something like that as well. So, yeah. they have. And that's why I say Jacksonville right away. They have the the resources to do it in Jacksonville, and I assume Jacksonville will be the place for their eventually big stadium event. But I think we're again we're a couple of years probably from that. Uh, they, again, they have to build their bigger stars bigger, and the stars they have now are just gonna like even I can even put John Moxley in that conversation. John Moxley is getting bigger than he's ever been in his entire career. So that guy's he hasn't reached his limit yet this guy is continuing to grow and he's growing into if i could compare to a derby character he's growing to that stone cold steve austin type character which i think eventually they will build him into because he has all the persona to be someone like that he's got all the characteristics to be someone like that and he's got he's getting the popularity really behind him to be someone like that like i go back and listen to it every time if you listen the pop that exploded as soon as the referee counted three at Revolution. Oh my God, man. Like it went from zero to a hundred. And I'm like, I've never, I've heard, I've seen like finishes where the finisher is hit and the crowd explodes. And there's like a faint cheer after the three count. His, he hit his finisher and the crowd's waiting for it. As soon as he hit three, that crowd lit up. And I haven't seen that in a long time. And I think Moxley is that next guy to to get to that ceiling so we'll see yeah we'll see yeah we also, shall. Uh, besides this being moxley winning for that pop uh, i think it was also like uh one of the first times that you saw a company you know build somebody up and then pull the trigger on them you know like all the years i've watched WWE, things have happened like that where they built people up, and it's like you're constantly like, okay, yeah, this is it. This is their moment, mm -hmm. and they don't do it. Right. It, it, it was like AEW didn't do it. They finally did it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I've seen that way too many times. Thank God we have AEW. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need this. I'm, I'm so happy I did it because this. Oh. How are y'all's uh, TNT tournament bracket looking? Oh, mine was ruined the first week. <laughs> mine was ruined the first match, actually, because I put Sean Spears in the finals, so that's gone. <laughs> I'm still going. I mean, I, I mean, at one point during that match, I thought Sean Spears was going to go over Cody because I was like, okay, whoa, <laughs> he's uh, there, but they're building him up. But then I was like, okay, uh, with mine, uh, uh, I thought Kip was going to beat Dustin, but then when they did the whole Dustin retirement angle, I was like, oh, crap. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned that, too. Like, we thought it was a shame that like, Kip, Kip was definitely – yeah, would have been a good pick to pick for the TNT Championship. That's a guy that that uh, is almost at a point where he needs something to elevate him a little bit more than he already has, which me and Tiff brought up uh, on the podcast so far that – this has been a blessing in disguise for Kip, this pandemic, because now he's had more TV time than he ever has since the AEW started. So, right. um, yeah, it was, like you mentioned the Sean Spears thing. Like, man, he, it, I, I thought that, too. Like, it looked for sure like he was going to go over on Cody. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, 
it, I was waiting for like a Lance Archer to appear. I was waiting for something to happen to send Sean Spears into the next round because I knew it wasn't going to be clean. It was going to be dirty. It was going to be something. But right. uh, I think they did a good job with that match, regardless. Oh, uh, with mine, uh, my finals. Uh, I have Darby facing Archer, and I have Darby going over Archer. I think I, I think be kind of shenanigans. I I don't think Archer's going to win, but because I, I don't think Cody and Archer needs to have a title like of uh, uh, against it. I think it's just going to be. Like, it's just going to be a big feud match. I also feel like a dark, it, it, this is made it can, for me. It can <laughs> really go either way. And I know we talked about this like last week. And, and I was saying, I was like, this can really, you know, and that's why I like this tournament because we really don't know. Now, in reality, new talent should go over with this belt, right? And I had yeah. said this numerous times. Darby should go over because the fans will love it, right? Yeah. Archer's a beast, okay? A lot of people know who Archer is, and I know a lot of people are new, do not know who he is, and they're building up as a beast or whatever like that. And it could go over Cody versus Archer. But I'm really hoping here that Darby takes this win, and like you said, I don't think we need a belt for Cody and Archer to happen. You don't need this belt. Yeah. So, um... But I'm going to be a little bit salty if Cody takes the belt, I feel like, because, again, you're putting yourself over and you really need to start building up the new talent. Yeah. Not that I don't like all these guys because I absolutely do. But, um, again, like Cody doesn't need the belt. Like we need we need we need to start showcasing some of this new talent. Yeah. So like with Cody, the thing is like a. Uh, uh, but people think that like this title was made for him since he can't challenge for the right. other for the main title. But right. I think they've already found a way out of that because Cody said yesterday in, the, in his Instagram Q and A that he now owns Cody Rhodes. He can go by that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 what I've been saying forever is I feel like Cody's going to eventually turn heel and go by Cody Rhodes. Oh. And that's how they're going to challenge. They're going to loophole that. That's a. I like that take. Hey, yeah, yeah, I like that. Mm. <laughs> oh man, I, I never thought of it like that. Mm, yeah. That is your loophole. I like it. <laughs> okay, it's, Kyle. It's you. I Cody, think you. Cody can't challenge, but Cody Rhodes can. <laughs> I see you, Kyle. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> wow, I never thought of it like that. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I got, I got, I got a serious question though. Does okay. Chris Jericho ever win the TNT Championship at least once before the end of his career? <laughs> oh. <sighs> so he can I add that know. to his freaking reservoir. He can add that to his freaking his trophy case. Does he eventually win the TNT Championship? Like That's going to be a serious question because we don't really know how long Jericho has left in the tank and how yeah. long he plans to keep going. Um, obviously, like him doing this and doing rock and roll is obviously shaving late like life off his off his his time here so i i'd imagine i want to say no because my gut's saying like he he will try but he won't be successful but i wouldn't be surprised if he eventually is at least a one-time tnt champion yeah i think uh i think oh boy you just said will happen i I think maybe he'll eventually he'll challenge for it but he'll lose putting over new talent okay maybe there you Dude, go. I feel like Jericho would want to put over. Uh, Jericho is about putting over new people and stuff. Uh, uh, well, uh funny thing. Uh, 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 everybody was talking about you know last week Kenny Omega and Alan Angels and talking. You know there was controversy. Yeah. Some people didn't didn't like that Alan Angels had. You know it wasn't a complete squash match. Well, yeah. a lot of a lot of people don't know, but like, uh, uh, if you follow SHW, uh, uh, Kenny, when he, when he showed up at SHW, Alan Angels was one of them. He, he got into, uh, he got into a, uh, he got into a fight with. So like when I saw that, I was like, Oh man, this match has been brewing for over a year now. And so I, I was really excited about that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I'm excited. I'm just excited. General. <laughs> I'm uh, just excited. I'm just excited. Just give me some wrestling. I'm, I'm just, happy. I'm happy. Such good shit. <laughs> uh, 
I'm a mod. I'm a mod. Oh man, cool stuff. Cool stuff, man. I love uh, it. It is cool stuff. Uh, stuff. Uh, it's great stuff. Another thing that could <laughs> possibly happen that a lot of that some people have speculated, and I was like, uh, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't be too unhappy if this happened. If we get Cody and Dustin too for the finals of the team. Yeah, we were talking about that a little bit too. I can like see that happen. That's why I said there's a lot of possibilities here with this. Yeah. So it, it could really go either way. It really can. We just and don't. It, yeah, and this company has shown us that, like, you know, what well, something that you think is going to happen may not happen. Like I thought for sure uh, when it, uh, when the the champion the the tag team tournament started that the Young Bucks, you know, w- w- would at least be in the finals and they put out my private party in the first match. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. I was like, this ain't water. Water. This is my boys, man. My boys. I bet you like their uh, BTE footage. Of course. Of course. And I know who filmed it, too. That's the funny thing. I know the guy who filmed it. Like, I know them. Like, like, legit. Those are my boys. Like, you know, I don't say it just to say it. They know me. Like, I know who they are. Like, those are my boys, man. Mm Mm-hmm. That's how, I, uh, that's how I feel as well. Like uh, the, the camera people for it, for AEW are also the camera people for SHW. Mm-hmm. So like I know most of them. I know the, of the production team in AEW. <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. It's just crazy. It's small world. It's very small world as yeah. we keep going. Even like we're good friends with GoPro Wrestling. Like, you know, it's just it, – it really it really is a small world. Mm-hmm. So, but – uh, the uh, if y'all remember at Double or Nothing, the Casino Battle Royal, the Sunny Days. Yeah. He was, yes. Yeah, Sunny Days. Uh, he's the uh, he's the owner and the main booker of SHW. Oh. And he, yeah, and he also uh, does a lot of the Road Two videos for her AEW. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so, know that. Like, yeah, it's, so like it's cool. Like SHW has this like unofficial connection to AEW in like almost every way. See? That's See? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so important, man. Like I'm gonna keep pushing it. I'm just gonna keep going. I know. Independent yeah. wrestling man. I'm telling you. You mm-hmm. need to watch you. what independent wrestling on Power Slam TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no holds free. Not so cool, no man. no holds free, yeah. Exactly no, it. <laughs> definitely a lot of great stuff on there. I can't wait to sit there and start watching. So, I think we've come to the end here. I think uh, people are sick and tired of us talking. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Anywho, um, I do want to thank Kyle for mm-hmm. Ollie Kyle for coming on to the show today. It was really much appreciated, Kyle. Definitely a uh, a awesome podcast in the making. I'm so glad we got this done. Um, can't wait to have you on the podcast again. Definitely going to have you back on. We'll talk some more AE Dub for sure. Um, but yeah. guys, like Kyle just said. Make sure you head over to powerslam.tv. Check out this awesome app, guys. Your source for all independent wrestling coverage. Use code no holds free and enjoy one month free trial on us. So thank you again to our friends at Power Slam Wrestling Network for that code. So guys, again, use no holds free, N-O-H-O-L-D-S-F-R-E-E. And enjoy one month free trial on us. Thank you very much to our friends at powerslam.tv. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up here for the uh, part two of episode number three of the WrestleForum podcast right here on the No Holds Barred Network. It is your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, owner and CEO of the No Holds Bar Network, and I'm always joined by my co-host. She is the executive vice president of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, and she's the queen of the indies, Tiffany, and I'm, we're joined by our third today, Ollie Kyle at Kyle's Press God. Guys, I put his link down in the description below. Please go and give him a follow on Twitter. Give him some love. And make sure you are liking this video. You are subscribing to the network. And you're, uh, if you're on On The Go listener, make sure you're living, leaving a five-star review. Thank you to our all On The Go listeners for downloading this episode, as always. That's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you, Kyle, for coming on again. We really do appreciate it, man. Take it easy. Everyone out there, stay safe. Wash your hands. 
We'll see you next time. <laughs>